Now moving on to the actual content that will be displayed on our website is we need to create a body element and we're going to go ahead and start off with our navigation here. And to create our navigation, we're going to start off with our header element here, followed by our nav element. So this nav element is going to have two classes. One is going to be nav and the second is going to be full nav. And you guys will see exactly how these classes work in just a second. I will do a brief explanation of that. But if you need some extra help, link up top and down below to a video where I go more in depth about CSS classes. Then for our font family, we're going to want to go over back to Google, copy our name of our font and just go ahead and paste it. Next, we need to create a div element. Then inside of that div element, we want to create an image element, which does not have a closing tag. And then we want to link to our images folder. So what we need to do is type images slash and then you'll see that Visual Studio code helps us out here. And then this is going to be our Alvin's Pizza restaurant logo. So we're going to go ahead and add that one here. And then for every image, you also need an alt attribute. This is going to be used by screen readers and it is also beneficial for SEO. So what we're going to do here is just do Alvin's logo. But in your case, try and be more descriptive because the more descriptive you are, the more you help out people with disabilities and the better it is for SEO. And we also want to add a style attribute here and we're going to make this style a width and then we want it to be 25% of its parent here. So we're going to specify 25% and all the sizing in today's video is going to be with width, rams and anything else that is going to work great for a responsive website you can use pixels for example but then when the viewport width changes like for example for a mobile phone or maybe for a tablet it's going to stay at that standard pixel size so we don't want to use pixels today create another div and inside this div is where we're going to create all of our website links for this one it's going to be index dot html and then what we want to do is put our text in here of home because our index.html is really our home page and then what we're going to do from here is we're simply going to copy this and paste it three more times and then we're going to change the name of our links here so this one's going to be menu then you also want to change the corresponding html page so this is going to be our menu.html this is going to be our about link. And then we want to link to our about.html. And lastly, we're going to have our order link going to our order.html. And then for this one, since it's going to be designed a little bit differently, we also want to add our class order nav. So what I want to do is actually show you guys how our website's looking so far. So what I'm going to do is right click and go down here where it says open with live server. If you didn't install live server, you can also open it in your default browser. Here. And as you guys can see, this is how it looks so far because we don't have any styles or anything really going on, but it is successfully displaying, which is what we needed to know. Next, we need to create the mobile portion of our navigation. So in this case, what we're going to do is create another nav element and we're going to use the nav class followed by the mobile nav class. So you guys can see that up here we have our full nav and down here we have our mobile nav. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this one to display for mobile devices and set this one to display for tablets or desktop devices. And so what we need to do is create two more divs here, followed by one more. Inside our first div, we're simply going to have our image element again. So we're just going to copy and paste that here. Go to Font Awesome 6.5, then click on this first link here. Go to Icons, and then you can simply search for bars. We're not going to be using anything paid. We're going to go ahead and select this one. Then what we want to do is navigate back to our code editor, go ahead and paste this in. And then we also want to add a title because this is going to be used 
for screen readers, button to open, navigation. And then later on, we're gonna come back to this and add a little bit of functionality using our JavaScript. Scroll back up, and we're actually going to create our overlay for our mobile navigation. Right underneath our body element, and then we're gonna go ahead and specify overlay for mobile. And keep in mind, you guys are gonna wanna leave lots of comments as you develop your own website because it's going to be extremely useful. Add an ID called overlay, and we're doing an ID because we're going to be using that directly with JavaScript. And then we want to create two more div elements. Inside of this first div here, we're going to link to a font awesome icon. And this font awesome icon is going to be FA followed by FA dash times, and this is basically going to be an X. And then we also want to include our title as button to close mobile navigation. And this is going to be again for screen readers. And now what we need to do is just take these links, copy and paste them here. And then we need to add the class for our text here, and it's going to be overlay dash Text. Go back to our live server and preview this. You guys can see it looks really ugly, but all we need to see here for now is that everything is successfully displaying, which it is. So now what we need to do is go back to our styles.css page and we need to start adding some styles. So we're gonna start off with our asterisk and what this is going to do is declare global styles. And then we wanna specify a few styles for our body element. So the background color, we just want it to be white, so we're gonna specify that. And we also wanna adjust our margin to zero and our padding down to zero, so everything takes up the full width of our screen. Then we also want to change the box sizing, and what this is going to do is when you add padding, for example, it will be included in the size of your element, so it won't go outside let's say a grid or a flex box. And we're gonna go ahead and change this to border box. Target our header element and our position, we want it to be relative. Then we wanna change the Z index, which is going to be the depth of our element on our screen. So if we change this to one, it's going to be displayed closer to us. So it's gonna be on top of everything on our page, which is what we want. Then we wanna change the height of this element to three rem. And then rem is just going to be a relative unit and we're gonna use that to make our text and everything on our page completely responsive. Now we wanna target our nav element. We want our background color to be white. And then we're going to be stealing the color from our design and we're gonna use the hex color like so, and this is going to be basically like a darker red color. And we wanna go ahead and display this as a flex element. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to flex. And now if we go back to our page and refresh, you're gonna see that everything is displayed as a flex box now. But we need to keep going because obviously this is not the finished product. Now that we have a flex box set up, we want everything to display in the center on the vertical axis so to do that what we're going to do is specify justify content and go ahead and center that now if we go back to our page and refresh you're going to see that everything is now centered on our vertical axis. Now to center everything on the horizontal axis with Flexbox, what we're gonna wanna do is specify align items center, and then everything will be centered on the horizontal axis. Then we also want to add a little bit of padding here, and we're just gonna specify five rem, so we have a little padding around our navigation. Then we wanna change the position to fixed because we want our header to stay right at the top of our screen. If you scroll down or up, it's always gonna be at the top if you specify fixed. And that's another reason why we made our header position relative. So we could use this position fixed down below. And we want the width of this to be 100% of our screen. So we're gonna specify that as 100%. And then we want our height again to be three Rim. And then we also want a little bit of a shadow at the bottom. So we're gonna specify box shadow and we're going to say zero and then four pixels followed by six pixels. Then we want to use our RG 
be a value here. and we just want this to display as black so we're going to use three zeros followed by our opacity of 0 0.1 and then you guys will see exactly how this functions if we go back and refresh this now you guys will see that there's a little bit of a bottom shadow on our navigation now we're going to start getting into some more advanced css concepts so what we're going to do is specify our nav class then we want to target our div so what this is doing here is it's targeting all the divs within our nav class so basically if we go back here and take a look where we have nav so we have our nav class followed by a div and another div. So right now it's targeting both of these divs inside our element with the nav class here. So we're targeting two divs, but what we wanna do is we only wanna target the first div in that navigation element. We will only wanna target the second div inside our nav element here. So what we're gonna do is specify nth child and then inside of here, we're going to specify our second div element. So what this is doing now is it's only targeting the second div within our element with the nav class, which is this one here. Now, what we need to do is display this again as a flex box. Then we want to align our items again to the center. And then we want to just add a little bit of padding to the right side. So we can change this to one rem. And then we want to change the font weight, which is going to make our font appear thicker and we're going to select Boulder. Now, if we go back and look at our page, you're gonna notice that you can only see our overlay HTML here, followed by our mobile navigation. So since we don't have all of our styles set up yet, they're actually overlapping right now. So if I go down here to my inspection tools, open my body, go within my header element, you're gonna see that we have two nav elements here. Once we finish all the styles, it will fix this issue. But just to show you guys that it is here for now, we're gonna go ahead and delete our mobile navigation. And now you will be able to see what we're doing here with our full screen navigation. Copy this portion of our CSS up here because we wanna reuse it again. Now we want to target the fourth link within our div. So what we're gonna do is specify our a element here followed by a colon followed by nth child again but in this case we only want to target the fourth element so what we're going to do is specify minus n plus three so what this is going to do is this is going to target the fourth element right here which is going to be the one that is going to look like a button so that's what we're going to be doing here change the color to our standard red color that we're using for our color scheme. And we want to get rid of that underline by specifying text decoration none. Then we want to change the padding to zero and one rem. So this is going to be a shorthand use of padding here. So specifying zero is going to make the top and the bottom padding zero but the left and the right will be one rem. Next, we're gonna copy this CSS again, but now we want to target the first element. So we're gonna target the first div, which is going to be our image. So we're going to add image at the end here, and then we just want to change the padding. So we're gonna change this to 0 0.5 rem like so. Now remember, we did add this order nav class here, so we're gonna go ahead and copy this to make sure we get the name right. And we want this to appear like a button. So we're gonna go over here and specify this class like so by adding the period and then pasting our order nav class. And then to align this flex element by itself, we're gonna to wanna to use align self to the center, which is going to center this on our horizontal axis with the rest of our elements. Then we just wanna add a little more margin here like so. So we're gonna go zero and then 0.5 rim. Then we want to add a little bit of padding for our button. So we're gonna specify this to 0.5 rim for our top and bottom. And then for our left and right, we want it to be two rim. 
Then our background color is going to be the same red we've been using. And then the color of our text needs to simply be white. And then we don't want any border on this element. So we're gonna specify border to none. Then we wanna have a border radius, which is going to round off our element. So we're gonna change this to 1.5 rem. Then our font size, we want this to be one rem. And now we're gonna get into using CSS media queries. So what we're gonna use our media queries for is we only want our full screen navigation to display for full screen devices, then our mobile navigation to display for mobile devices. To use a media query, you simply put in the at sign and then type in media. And then we're gonna go ahead and start off with our min width here. And what this is going to do is it's going to tell our code to only work from this code up. I'm going to put 800 pixels here. So from 800 pixels up, it's going to run this code, but anything underneath 800 pixels, this code is not going to be used. Within our media query, we want to target our mobile nav class. So what this is going to do is it's going to disable our mobile navigation using display none when we're at 800 pixels are or larger because that's when we want our full screen navigation to display. Now we're going to copy this media query and go down and what we're going to do is we're going to change this second one to max with 800 pixels. Now from 800 pixels down it's going to display our mobile navigation. So what we need to do is change this mobile nav to full to disable our full screen navigation for mobile devices. Then we're gonna add a few more styles to our mobile navigation here. So all we need to do here is add or subtract, I should say, a little bit of padding. So we're just gonna make this padding equal to zero. And then we want to target our font awesome icon here by targeting FA bars, the padding of this to point five gram. And then we're gonna go ahead and save that. Now we're gonna go take a look at our website here, like so, and you're gonna notice that if we go into our inspecting tools right here and we resize the page, don't worry about this right now. This is just our overlay code. We're gonna go ahead and change that coming up here soon in a minute, but this is our navigation right here. And if we shrink down to 800 pixels slowly, you're gonna notice that our mobile navigation now takes effect down here below. I actually made a quick mistake and this is pretty much inevitable when you're coding or creating websites. So what we need to do is go back to our nav and go back to where we changed our justify content. And what I meant to put here instead of center was space between. And you guys will see that you have a few other options for this. So now if we go ahead and save, and go back and look at our navigation, you're gonna notice that it's spaced apart the way we want it now. And then if we go ahead and inspect this and shrink it down, you will see that our mobile navigation is also present. Now to show you guys the importance of getting your media queries right, I actually made a mistake on purpose. So if we go to inspect and actually change our viewport width to 800, you're gonna see that neither of our navigations successfully appear. To fix this issue, what we wanna do is change this to 801. So if we go ahead and save that and go back to our website and refresh, you're gonna see that our mobile navigation does successfully appear at 800 pixels. But if we change this to 801, you're gonna see our full screen navigation successfully go into effect. So make sure you really test these media queries and make sure they're working and now what we need to do is target that overlay styling. So we're gonna go ahead and add a note here for ourselves called overlay. And then this is going to be only for our mobile overlay navigation. Now remember, we used an ID called overlay. So to target IDs, you wanna use the hashtag or pound symbol and then specify your ID. Now, right off the bat, we do not want our overlay to display. So we're gonna change this to none. Then we want our position of this to be fixed. Then we want it to take up the entire screen. So we're gonna change the width of this to 100%. 
And then we're also going to change the height of this to 100%. Now we wanna change the background color and we wanna use our RGBA value because we want to add some opacity and you cannot do that with hex colors. So we're gonna go ahead and select this one, but we wanna change the opacity to 0.7. And then we want to make our Z index two so it will display over everything on our page. Now we wanna target our overlay text class. We wanna change the position of our text to absolute so it displays right in the center for the whole time that overlay is up. Since we're using an absolute positioning, we're gonna need to specify 50% for our top. And this is going to be how we position our elements on the page because we're using absolute positioning. And then we want our left to also be 50%. And what this is going to do is it's going to center our text or any content that you have within your overlay text class. Now to successfully center all of this, we also want to include transform. And then we're gonna do translate, and then this is going to be minus 50% comma minus 50%. So with our top at 50, our left at 50, and our translate values here, both at negative 50, this is going to center the text in this class. And then we just wanna add text align center to make sure everything aligns centered. And now we wanna target all of our link elements within our overlay text element. So we're gonna specify that by adding our A right at the end of our overlay text selector. And we just wanna display this as block. We want the color to always appear as white. Then we want to change our font weight to 600 to thicken our font just a little bit. And we want to remove our text decoration, change our font size to 1.5 rem, add some padding, target our FA times, which is going to be that X that we use to close out of our navigation. And we want this to be a little bit larger so it's easy for people to see. So we're gonna change that to four rim. And then again, we want our color to be white. And we wanna add a little bit of padding equal to one rim. And now we want to start creating our animation using keyframes. So we're, what we're gonna do is specify keyframes starting with our at sign, followed by the name of our animation, which is going to be rotate animation. And then we're going to specify at 0%, we want our transform to rotate at zero degrees. And then we want to copy and paste this and change this to 100%. So each time you hover over it, we want it to rotate 90 degrees. So we're starting at zero and then going to 90 each time we hover over the element. So we want to target our FA times icon here, but we also want to add a colon followed by hover. And this is going to tell it that we only want this style to take place if you hover over the element with your mouse. And then we need to specify our animation and then type in our rotate animation and then we want this to take 200 milliseconds and we want it to ease in and ease out so we're going to go ahead and save this code here go back to our page go ahead and refresh it and so if we go ahead and inspect this and shrink down to mobile you're going to notice that we cannot see this because we haven't added our javascript functionality yet but just to go ahead and test this I'm gonna go ahead and open my body element, navigate to my overlay div here, and I'm gonna disable this display none property so we can successfully see our overlay. And if we close out of that now, you're gonna notice that we successfully have all our navigation links here. And if we hover over our X, it successfully turns 90 degrees. So now what we need to do is navigate to our JavaScript file, and we're gonna start writing some basic basic javascript so do not be afraid i will explain what's going on so first we want to specify our function by typing out function you can also write arrow functions but if you're a beginner just do it this way and we want to specify the name of our function and then after the name you need to always have your parentheses. Now this is going to be the part of our function that displays our overlay content. And we're going to create a constant variable using our const keyword. And then our variable is going to be named turn on. And we want to target our overlay ID here. So we're gonna go document 
dot get element by ID. And then we want to target our overlay ID. And that's why we use the ID when we were first setting up our navigation so we could use get element by ID here. Now we're gonna use the variable that we just created and add a style to it to, so it will actually display and then dot display. And then we're gonna make this style equal to block. Now the next thing we need to do is turn off our vertical scroll so it freezes all the other content on the page. So we're gonna turn off vertical scroll by creating a new const called overflow. And here we wanna target our body element. So what we're gonna do is specify document.query selector, and then we're going to select our body element. And now we're going to use our newly created variable, and we're gonna go overflow.style.overflow equals hidden. So this is going to keep you from scrolling up and down the page when the overlay is displayed. Now we need to create our off function. So we're going to name it as such and we're going to follow the same principles that we did with our on function. And basically all we're going to do is just copy all this code, put it within here. And now this, we just want this to be turn off instead of turn on. So we're just gonna change this like so. And then we wanna change our display instead of block, we wanna change it to none. And then in our overflow style here, and I forgot to add my semicolons here, instead of making it hidden, we just want to do nothing by leaving it blank. Now, if we save this, go back to our page and go ahead and refresh it. And then we're gonna go ahead and shrink it down to where it's mobile now, you're gonna notice that it still doesn't work and you're gonna be like, why is this not working? Well, it's gonna be because we didn't actually tie these functions to our HTML page yet. So what we need to do is go back to our index.html and then we need to go to our mobile navigation. And then in our mobile navigation, what we need to do is add an on click attribute. And we're going to make this equal to our JavaScript function. And what this is saying is it's saying every time you click on this, it's going to run the on function in our JavaScript file here. And now for our X, we also need to add another one of these on click attributes. So we're gonna scroll up to our overlay, go to our X icon here, go ahead and paste and change this to our off function. Go ahead and save. Now, if we reopen our page and shrink this down just a little bit, you're gonna notice that if we click on this, our overlay does successfully display and if we go ahead and click this, it does successfully disappear. In another video, I took this functionality a bit further. So if you want some additional functionality to this overlay, I'll leave a link down below to that video for you guys. And now the underline on this is still appearing. So what we need to do is go back to our styling, go to our order nav class, and then we want to change our text decoration equal to none, and it will successfully get rid of that underline like so. So keep in mind, you're gonna have to edit things as you go because it's probably not going to be perfect, but that's really gonna help you guys learn how to code with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript correctly. We wanna move on to the next portion of our homepage here. And what we wanna do is specify a main element. This is going to help our browser distinguish our main content. And we wanna start off with a div and inside of this div, we want a class equal to our hero container class. Then we want to create an image element. And here is where we're going to put our hero style image. And we want to go to our images folder and select the image that we want to use. And we always want to, again, make sure that we create alternative text. So we're just gonna call this pizza going into the oven. And then on all of our images, we also want to add a load attribute and make this equal to lazy. And this will be great, especially if somebody has a slower internet connection, it won't wait on all the images to render. After our image, we want to add another div. And this div is going to need a class called hero text. And within this, we're gonna create an H1 element and we're simply going to add Alvin's 
pizzeria as the name of our restaurant. And then we wanna create a button using our anchor element, and this is just going to be order. And to make this actually link somewhere, we're gonna add an href attribute and change this to order.html. We want a class equal to hero button. Create a div and with a class called red spacer. And from here, we want to start creating our hero style image style. So first, we're going to target our hero container, which is going to be our parent div element here. And what we want to do is change the position to relative and make the color of the text all white. Now we want to target our hero image. And I actually forgot to add that class to my image element here. So we're going to go ahead and add that in here, change our height to automatic. And then we're going to change our width to 100% because we want it to take up our entire view width and we want to change our display equal to block. Now we want to select our hero text class, change our position to absolute. And this is going to style the text that's going to be going over our hero style image. We want to change the top to 50%. And then in this case, we don't want it to be centered like we did with our overlay. So we're actually going to change the left to be 20 view width. So this is going to change based on what our view width is. And then we want to transform and translate like we did for our overlay text. So this is going to be minus 50% and minus 50% again. And then we want our text to be aligned to the left. That should be standard, but I always like to specify what I want so every browser can read this instead of just guessing. 20 view width is not gonna look good on mobile devices. So we're gonna again set up our media query below and then we're gonna change our max width to 768 pixels. Then inside of here, all we need to do is target our hero text again and change our left to 30 VW. And this is a great example of how CSS works here. So CSS reads from top to bottom. So it's gonna go ahead and read this first. So it's gonna add our left of 20 VW. And then when it comes down here, it's gonna either read this as true or false. If this statement is true here, it's gonna change our left to 30 VW. So basically what it will do is it will override our original style here. So keep in mind that whatever you write last is what's going to happen. So if we just change this, for example, and take this out, it's basically going to override this style that we have up here. Here. And then we'll change that back for now. And now we need to target our hero button. And then this is going to be exactly the same as our order nav here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy all of this. I just did this again so you guys can really see how you can easily repeat yourself using CSS. Most of the time, you would just wanna create one class and have all your button styles within one. But in this case, we're gonna do two so you guys can see that you can use the same styles on different elements. You can target different classes with those same styles, but obviously writing less code is always going to be your best option. But in our case, we don't want this aligned self center. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that. And now we need to change our hero text, but we only want to change the H1. So we're gonna specify hero text followed by our H1. And then we wanna change the font size here to three rem and our margin needs to be one rem by zero. So now let's go ahead and save this and preview it to see if we got this correct. And as you guys can see, it is looking good. But what I need to do here is I wanna increase the size of this text here. So what we're gonna do is go back to our styles and actually change our font size to 1.5 rem. Now you guys can see it looks a little bit better and we're gonna see what's going on here because it's pushed to the right a little bit. And when you're developing, it's a good idea to always use your inspection tools like this. So we're gonna go take one look at this and see what's going on. And you guys can see that you can look at all of your HTML here and it will also show you the styles for that element. It's actually this margin here. And we're simply just gonna go ahead and get rid of that. 
see what that does. So now that looks a little bit cleaner. And the great thing about using these developer tools in your browser is that it will automatically make that change to your website and it's not permanent. So let's say you refresh, it will undo all the changes you made like so. So that doesn't change anything you do in your code editor, but it does let you kind of play with it and then take those styles and put it in your code editor now. So what I'm gonna do is go back here and just change our margin to zero. Simply going to target our red spacer class, change our width to 100%, change our height to 2.5 rim, and then we just need to specify our background color, our red again, save, preview this, and now you guys can see that we have the proper red bar down here. Next, we need to actually develop our pizza grid layout from our design. So let's go take one look at this. You guys are going to see that I have my grid looking layout here. You can use Flexbox to create this, but we've already used Flexbox a lot. So I'm going to show you guys how to use grid to create this. So we want to go beneath what we we're just doing, and this is going to stay within our main here. And we're going to say pizza grid just as a note for ourselves and we're going to start off with a div element and this div element is going to have a class equal to pizzas and now we want to create an h2 element and we're simply going to steal what was in our design so we're going to title this pizza favorites create another div and inside this div element we want to create a class called pizza grid and then within our grid we want to create another div element and inside of this we are going to use the class pizza child so you guys can see that i'm being really descriptive as to what these classes are targeting so i'm not lost if i ever have to come back to this especially like a few months or a few years from now and inside of this we're going to specify an h4 element and then i'm going to go back over here to my design and simply copy the text pepperoni pizza right into our code editor, add our image element. So now I'm gonna add my pepperoni pizza image and you guys can see all my images are descriptively labeled for my own reference when I'm developing. It makes it a lot easier if you do it this way. And this is also going to be read by the browser. So you wanna be descriptive for SEO purposes. And then we're gonna add our alt attribute here and just make this pepperoni pizza. Add our lazy load functionality to this. And then we also want this to take up 100% of its parent. So we're gonna change the width to 100% right here in line. Add our button as well. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And this is going to be our add to cart button. So here we need to add a class equal to add to cart. And then we're gonna create one more div. Inside of this div, our class is going to be add selected. And here's where we're going to put our numbers where we can increase and decrease. But today we're not going to be adding the actual functionality. It's just going to be static, but we will be adding that functionality in an upcoming video. And then we're going to add another button element followed by one of our font awesome icons. And this one is going to be FA solid FA minus and then we're going to add our h4 element here and we're just going to make this zero and then we're going to copy this button element down underneath our h4 element and change this to fa plus now we're going to go ahead and save that since we have the structure set up and we're going to refresh and you guys can see that all of our information is here except we just need to style it now in our styles we're going to start with a comment for ourselves so we're just going to go pizza elements specify our pizzas class and we want to target all of our h2 elements within that class and we also want to target our h1 element here so what we're going to do is instead of just adding a space we're going to add a comma then a space and our h1 element what this is going to do is it's going to target all of the h2 elements within our pizza class and it's going to target our h1 element so basically think of this comma as a plus sign saying that i want to edit both of these now we're going to change our font size to 2.5 rem and we're going to center our tech we want to get into our grid layout so we're going to target our pizza grid class and to change this into a grid we want to display this as a grid 
And then to specify how many columns we want to have, we're going to use grid template columns and we're going to use repeat followed by the number of columns that we want to have, which is three, followed by one FR. And all one FR is going to do is it's going to say each one of our columns needs to be equal in size to its other columns. So it's going to make sure that each one of these is equal in size. And then if I go back to my index, you're going to notice that I made a mistake. And this is a real common mistake when you're developing websites is repeating the class in the wrong place. So I want my pizza grid here in the first div, but in my second div, I want this to be the pizza child. And now I want to add a grid gap, and this is gonna add spacing between each one of the columns in your grid. And we're gonna make this one rem. Change our padding to zero, one rem, one rem, followed by one rem. Specify a max width because we only want this to get so large. So we're gonna change this to 1200 pixels. So it's gonna be responsive. And as soon as it gets to 1200 pixels, it won't keep getting larger. And then to make sure that content stays center, we also want to change our margin to auto. For our pizza child, we also want a grid layout. Change this display to grid. So basically what we're doing is creating a grid inside of our grid. And then we want to copy our grid template column style here. But in this case, we only want it to be one column. So change the three to a one. And then to center all of this on the vertical axis, we want to use our justify items for grid, not what we use for flex. We want to use the correct property for grid. Heal our grid gap style here and make this equal to 0.5 rem and now if we go take a look at it everything is centered on the vertical axis and everything is showing up correctly we just need to continue adding the rest of our styles target our pizza children within our pizza grid so we're going to do that by using the pizza grid and pizza child classes here and then we want to change our background color to black using our hex value change our border radius to 0.5 rem and this is going to round off our corners of our element and then we want to change the top and bottom padding so we're going to make this point by rem by zero because we don't want any on the left and right. Now we want to target our pizza child H4 element. We're going to make our font size to rem and our margin zero. And we're going to go back up here and change the color of our text in our pizza child to white. And you guys can see here that I'm targeting my pizza child class directly. And then I am again targeting my pizza child class. So what I can do here is I can basically come here and just take all these styles and just put them here because I'm targeting the exact same thing. But I wanted to show you guys multiple ways of targeting your elements. Now we're going to go back to using our pseudo selectors like we did earlier. So we're going to specify pizza child followed by our H4 and and child. And then we want to target the first one, change our font size to 1.5 RAM. So you guys are going to see that I'm also targeting H4 elements up here. But again, the last one is going to overwrite whatever we specify above because CSS is written top to bottom. Change our add to cart button. And I'm again going to paste the same button styles here, but I'm slightly going to edit them. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste those and then make my changes. So you guys can see here, this is all pretty much the same styles from the earlier, but just a little bit different. Now, if we refresh, you guys can see that this is looking good, except we need to add some styles down here at this part. So we're going to target our add selected class. We're going to change our display to grid one more time. So now we have a third grid here all within the same parent grid. And now all we need to do is change our grid template columns back to three in this particular grid. So we'll just copy and paste that. Then we want to align our items to the center, which is going to make sure everything is horizontally aligned. 
And then we also want to tech line center. Now, if we go ahead and save this and refresh our page, you guys are gonna notice that it looks much cleaner. Now we need to target our FA times and using a comma, target our FA plus icon. And then make sure you add your period here because we are targeting a class. And all we wanna do here is change the font size to one rem to make this responsive. Now for mobile devices, we're not gonna be able to have a three column layout. So what we need to do is target our classes again using a media query, use a max width, and then we're gonna specify 768 pixels. And since we only have one media query for this, we don't need to worry about the issue that we had earlier with our media queries. So we wanna target our pizza grid. And all we need to change here is our grid template column. So we're at three right now, but on mobile devices, we only want it to be one column. And we also need to target our pizza child, make our width equal to 70% and change our margin to auto. So everything's aligned along our vertical axis. If we go ahead and save and take a look at our page, you guys are gonna notice that it's looking really good so far. We wanna round out our button elements. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna target our add selected buttons here. So we're gonna target our button, then we're gonna change our margin to 0.25 rems, change our border radius to 50%, which is going to make it a perfect circle. And then we don't want any border, so we're gonna change this to none. And then we're gonna align our text in the center. Take a look at our elements here. You're gonna notice that they're rounded out correctly. You're gonna notice that our text is dipping down a little bit, but that just has to do with how the numbers work with this particular font. And we just wanna copy and paste our pizza child, and we're gonna paste that two times like so. And then all we need to do is just change out our images here. So I'm gonna change this to our Supreme, and then I can just change my alt text out really nice and easy. And then all of this can stay the same for now until we kind of make this more dynamic in a later video, we'll make some changes to that. And then of course we also need to change our title. You're gonna notice that our grid is now filled out the way we want it. And if we go inspect this, you're gonna see that if we go into a mobile layout, it's gonna be only one column. So if we go to, let's say we go to an iPhone SE, you're gonna see that for mobile devices, this looks a lot better. And for now, some of this is messed up just because we haven't made our text responsive yet. But as soon as we do this, all of this is gonna fit in there. If we get up to 1200 pixels, what's gonna happen is our grid here is gonna stop growing. So everything else that we haven't specified a max width for will continue to grow. But for this, it's gonna stop growing at 1200 pixels. And now we need to create our footer and our footer does not need to go within our main element because it's not main content. So what we're gonna do is create a comment called footer, and then we're simply going to create a footer element. Within this footer, we're gonna create three divs. So we'll create one and copy and paste it two more times. In this first one, all we need is our logo. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our logo one more time. As a matter of fact, we're not even gonna retype all of that out. We're simply just gonna go grab our logo from the top up here. And while I'm thinking about this, I need to also make sure that I have my lazy loaded image for this as well. And we'll just paste that in right here, add our lazy loading attribute. I'm just gonna add a little sitemap. And then we're gonna copy our link elements here and simply paste these within our second div. And then we're gonna create an H4 and we're not even gonna type this up from scratch. We're just gonna go over to the design and just copy the copyright message and just go ahead and paste it right in here. Test this out on our page. All the content that we want is successfully displaying. And now we just need to style it. Add a comment, target our footer element, and we wanna change the background color. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take the color directly from my design. And then I'm going to use grid again. You can use Flexbox, whichever one works best. Flexbox does work better on older browsers. So if you're worried about that, I would go ahead and use Flex. But in our case, we're gonna use grid because it is compatible. And then again, we just wanna specify our grid template columns. And this is going to be three columns for our footer. Align our items again, adding of one rem. And our text color 
is going to be that red. Now we're gonna target the second div within our footer, once again, using nth child, and we're gonna target the second one. And in this case, we want our text to be aligned in the center. Now what we wanna do next is go back to our HTML, and we actually need to wrap this middle content within a div element. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We want this all to be within one div. So we're gonna copy and paste this, target first div here. So we're gonna copy and paste that, change this to a one, and we're gonna change our display to flex. We want to justify the content to make sure it's all centered. And then we can just copy and paste this one more time. And we wanna target all of the link elements. So just add an A here. And we want to get rid of our text decoration. So we're gonna change this to none. Now we're gonna change the color to the red and change change our font size to one rim, target the last div inside of our footer. So we're gonna change this to three right here. And we want to align this to the right. Copy and paste this again. And we wanna target the first div in our footer. And we want to target the image within there. And we want to change the padding to 0.5 rim. Target the images, which are the icons for Facebook and Instagram within our third div. So we'll just add it like this with the comma. Save that, let's take a look at it. Still needs a little bit of work, but it looks much better. Go back to our HTML page, add one more div, and here is where we are going to add our final image elements on our home page. So we're just gonna copy this, paste it again. We're gonna change the width to 10% and change the width of our logo also to 10% because it's too large. Let's actually add our Instagram logo. Change this second one to our Facebook logos. Don't want this order nav class to be tied to our order link in our footer. It's looking much better. Make our font weight a little bit bolder because it looks a little bit light. So we'll go ahead and refresh that and you guys will see that this is gonna make these links look a lot better. We have our complete navigation, our hero style image with our buttons, our decorative bar here, along with our favorite pizzas on the homepage. Tap here to see what happens next.